it's actually wheeling. It's still not 100% perfect. I love a warm bump. I'm getting a little bit of wear on the tank here. Oh, it's fast. What's wrong with me? Hello and welcome to the new BMW R1300 TS. In this video, I'm going to be taking this bike out for a spin, letting you know what I think for it. I've been riding it for the last month or so. I'm really, it's a very, very good motorcycle. So if you're interested in the new R1300, join me for a spin around the countryside and I'll bring you all of my thoughts and what I think of this machine during the uh, months I've been riding it. So that's how they're interested. You know you've got to do. Drop the rolly intro. Welcome along guys and welcome to finally my review of the R1300 GS. You know, I've ridden it as much as possible. I've been out in the rain, I've been out in the cold. I haven't been out in the snow, but I've been out in the dark. You know, I've, I've run this bike through various conditions and I'm ready to bring you my full review of this machine. One thing we're going to be doing, me and Greg are also going to be doing comparison with this bike and the old 1250. So there'll be that video coming soon as well but in this video I'm just going to go through all of the features functions this one's a press bike so it's fully loaded it's got the up and down raising suspension you know, it's more or less got everything on it apart from I think the adaptive headlight one thing with this new 1300 you know the bike packs a lot more punch now I mean the 1250 you know it wasn't a slow bike and the nature of this boxer engine you know you've got instant torque right down in the rev range and this is now 149 newton meters of torque so it's got more torque than the old bike but the old bike was never shy of torque and that's what made it sort of feel faster than perhaps it was but now at 100 i think it's 147 horsepower it is actually it's actually a quick bike you could actually class it now as a quick bike and not only is it quick when you rev it and you've got a bit more at the top but it's the instant drive you've got i mean like from 2000 revs in fifth gear it's usable you know it's not rattling it's not clashing it's not trying to shake your teeth out it's got drive at the high gear from really low down and that is what makes a really easy to use road bike isn't it a really wide spread of power i don't think the gs is all about performance you know it never was i don't think it ever will be but what they've done they've brought extra power to it and you can really notice a lot more drive and the immediate drive and yeah we do a little bit of a thrash through the gears up to 60 at some point in this video but it's a quick bike now she's got a bit of go the ergos i think are more or less identical to the old 1250 we confirm that when we do our, our comparison but they feel more or less identical you sort of you, your feet are forward a little bit you're not you're not sat directly upright like you are on some of the other adventure bikes you're in a little bit of a sporty position you've got a little bit of weight over the front you know you're not sat directly up like you're sat under the kitchen table i really like the position of the gs i think they've nailed it <laughs> It's, it's actually wheeling. <laughs> they actually wheeled off down the road, Dad. I mean, it's got so much grunt initially. I mean, that is... I'm quite surprised. I think that uh, jogger had a bit of a shock there, as did I. It was going to take off like that. But you can actually hustle it. And I've actually got a dry bit of road here. I'm quite surprised. I've got it in dynamic. The, the brakes are incredible. There's loads of bite. There's loads of feel. And even though you've got... What is it? 237 kilos because that engine's low you know it changes direction really nicely <laughs> it's, it's wheeling it's actually wheeling <laughs> my god and i've not got any panniers i've not even got a full load and it, it's, a, it's a little bit it's a little bit of a hooligan and what surprises me the wheel was coming up but the electronics were letting it come up. You know, it was letting a little bit of fun, but a little bit of fun on the GS. Wow. So dynamically, I mean, the bike is, it's incredible what they've done. It always was bloody good. 
but somehow they've managed to improve it even more you know yeah that, that's it that's impressive the ride the quality of the ride the riding position the comfort it's all 10 out of 10. what's new on the r3200 is a lot more electronics now so Mm, so should we go? I think we go left actually. So the GS was sort of showing its age a bit with its electronics and the toys you could get for it. You know, there was no adaptive cruise control, there was no blind spot detection. You know, it's getting getting left behind a little bit by some of its rivals. Well of course, morning sir, BMW have addressed that and you've now got adaptive cruise control which works absolutely fantastically. So if we just set that it's detected that car in front and it will just sit behind that car and I can say well that's you I want I want to go I want to achieve 50 miles an hour and it will match that car's speed in front basically and you can select how close you want the, to sit behind the car in front so I got it sitting as close as possible so this is as close as it will sit now this, in the faster you go, that closeness will be further back, so it does depend on the speed you're doing, but that's how close it will sit. You can easily adjust that. I think this button here will adjust how far you want it to sit behind the car. I think I can do it here somewhere. <laughs> A long press will give me how close I want it to sit behind, so I can say, no, sit back a bit more than that. My slight criticism with this is the switch gear sort of not big enough to accommodate all the buttons it would need so you can also change gear as well while you're in the uh, cruise control which is nice but the, you need a little bit more switch gear room and then you know, they've got this button here which brings you into like a favorites where you can then assign what you want to this button but it's a little bit like oh, how do I get to that you know oh my electric screen or oh, how do I get to that the heated grips are now hidden in the menu so I've got that set as my heating so as I push that it'll, I, the shortcut is to my heating control so I've got the seat and the grips on maximum but one slight criticism is you've lost that heated grip button which I think was nice just to have a heated grip button so it's a little bit confusing with all of these menu options so, so that would be my only sort of criticism main criticism of this bike I guess it's a case of getting used to it but I have been getting used to it and I'm still finding it a little bit tricky you know and also the switch gear isn't illuminated I mean unbelievably the switch gear isn't illuminated so uh, you would have thought BMW would have had illuminated switch gear by now another thing which is incredible on this bike is how well set up that screen is now I'm six foot two so I'm, I'm a tool bugger, I've got the screen in the highest position and there's minimal wind noise on your helmet and I'm doing almost 50 miles an hour, we will get on the motor in a minute but there's minimal wind noise on the helmet that's always been a bugbear, I've never, I've never known an adventure bike where they've actually got that right there you go, the bike will start braking now to keep that distance, that car in front, it will actually apply brakes and it is, it's brake, the bike's braking you know so the bike can, does have control over the brakes which are also linked on this now so the ABS is a linked system now the screen is fantastic this is so good the way they've got it optimized for no turbulence on your helmet I don't know if it's because of this little, little lower ears these little spaniel ears or this bit here I don't know how they've done it but they've obviously spent a lot of time in the wind tunnel getting that screen to work perfectly I wouldn't even need a little add-on screen on top it's perfect so that, that's another thing they've absolutely nailed is the aerodynamics with the screen brilliant the heated grips are thermonuclear <laughs> I've got this on the level three position and even with summer gloves on you know I'm, 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 I'm fine it was six degrees out there today so it's pretty nippy the hand guards and the heated grips are keeping my hands warm even though I've only got summer gloves on the heated seat is also great and I've uh, I'm not really feeling that yet it takes a little while for a heated seat to start start soaking through doesn't it I'm not, probably not been riding long enough but I've also got that on level three as well so you've got all of those creature comforts mod cons bumping the road <laughs> wheels up oh it's ridiculous isn't it I can't believe they've added that you know, it's now got that level of fun <laughs> with the wheel coming up as well just a GS for heaven's sake I know that a lot of people moan you know there's just too much tech there's too much tech to go wrong and, and one thing I do like with the BMWs you know a lot of that tech 
is optional. You can buy the standard bike, I think for 15.6, I think it is, without electronic suspension. So you don't have to, you know, if you don't want that electronic suspension, you don't want to worry about that going wrong in the future, you know, when it's out, out of warranty, you can buy a basic bike. So you don't have to, you know, completely over spec and get all that tech if you don't want it. And that is a great thing about the about BMW, the way, I know by the, that does mean, of course, by the time you add everything, I mean, this bike is almost £23,000 and it still doesn't have the adaptive headlight. So you could probably spend £25,000 to have everything possible on your GS. So it's there if you want to add it, isn't it? And I like having that option, but it does make the actual uh, purchase quite complicated because you really got to think, do I want that, do I want this? You know, there's a lot of options you can chuck at this bike. Oh, look at that cool, look at that cool dude on the GS. <laughs> Is there such a thing? So here is the machine. I'm gonna walk you through some of the finer details of this bike. So this is the Tramontana edition, and the Tramontana edition is, I think, an extra two and a half thousand pound on top of the standard edition. For the Tramontana, you get this green uh, paintwork, which is, which is really rather nice with the custom sort of graphics and the gold wheels. You also get the, I think, the dynamic pack, which includes the upgraded, ca the upgraded calipers, like the lighter coloured calipers. Now, even though these say BMW on them, they are actually made by Brembo these and the stopping on this machine it is absolutely spot on no, no complaints there at all fully braided lines as well as you can see with the Tramontana you get the the billet package so you get the billet uh, rear sets now these rear sets are rather good because if you want to take your GS off-road you know when you're standing up it's a bit harder to get to the footrest but it's a little but if you push these and pull them or do something to them I did it earlier on pull them out you can spin them round and give you some, raise the brake lever up a little bit. So if you're off-road, you can find the brake easier. So that's quite a nice little touch with these uh, billet versions. I'm not sure you can do that with the standard versions, but you can with the billet option. The 719 edition also comes with the billet sort of levers. And these are really quite a nice feel to these levers as well. Um, so you've got fully adjustable both sides. You've also got, you know, lets you know here, the option 719 on the little uh, seat piece here, which again, is, I really like this sort of softer, area here you haven't got to worry about having your own sort of tank pad you've got all of this here is sort of the seat material which is nice like that and finally you also get the billet caps for your brake and clutch reservoir so you get a nice little uh, billet pieces and some gold funky handlebars i think that's everything you get with the tramontana um the akropovich this has also got the optional akropovich i think that's about a thousand pound for the akropovich doesn't really sound any louder than standard but it, it, it's just a little bit lighter basically it saves you probably saves you a kilo in weight but doesn't really offer much apart from better looks and slightly lighter i think the sound is, is very similar other great features with this bike is this little cubby hole here and you've got usb charging underneath here. there's a little usb charger down here Unfortunately, it's not wireless charging. That would have been the icing on the cake, wouldn't it? Wireless charging. But even my massive Samsung S3 Ultra will just about sit in there. Lovely. Now, the bike is a little bit dirty, so I do apologise for that. But one thing they've changed on the new GS is all of the engine finish has been changed. This sort of like stove enamel look. I think there was a few um, sort of warranty claims on paintwork. On, on the 1250 versions where the paint would start flaking. Well, they've made sure that doesn't happen on the 1300 version by stove enameling all, all of the front of the bike, all the main casings of the bike, all the cylinder heads as well are also in that same finish. And also something I did forget, the 719 version also comes with some nice billet cylinder covers. Here is that headlight, which has caused so much controversy with this bike. I th I'm fully used to this headlight now. I actually really like the look at the front end of this bike. If there's any criticism to be made, it's just this slight sort of flat area here which you've got for the radar, but that, that's unavoidable. And I think they've implemented that as well as a lot of the other manufacturers have. So yeah, you've got to have a flat piece for radar. It sort of integrates. When the screen comes down, it sort of fits over the top of it. Looks decent. This doesn't have the adaptive headlight. This is just a standard headlight, but the headlights work fantastic at night. The bike comes ready to fit the special Vario cases, which uh, have power to them. So there's little blanks here when you're not running the cases. I unfortunately don't have the cases, so I'd like to have shown you those. But yeah, they bolt on here. The cases then give you power 
So you've got a light in the cases plus a central locking, you know, so they're quite, they're quite funky those cases, but you know, whether, whether that's necessary or not, I don't know, but it's a nice, nice feature, but it does up the price of them. Rather than the tubular subframe, the bike does have just like a sheet metal subframe now, but that's where they've saved you know, a lot of weight on this machine. The engine and gearbox is actually six kilos lighter than the old bike. A lot, a lot of people say, oh, BMW are lying about the weight, you know. They're not comparing like for like, but you know, the six and a half kilos saved of the engine, um, the subframe's lighter. Yeah, it's got extra tech, which has probably had a little bit of weight, but overall BMW say it's 12 kilos lighter than the outgoing bike. That dashboard is absolutely superb. I have to say, you know, it's more, more or less the same as the old dashboard, but obviously with some added functionality like that shows me me up and down suspension. So you can look at that drop when you start to slow down and go up again when you're rolling, you've got your heated grip. You know, it's the same display as before, but it's still the best display on the market without a doubt. BMW displays, absolutely fantastic. One thing which is new uh, on, on, the, on the display now is it comes with the sport the sport option, which I'm a big fan of. So you get that sports display where you've got your lean angles and stuff. I just think that's a really nice layout, that sports display, and it gives you brake pressures and your traction control intervention. So if you did want to do a track day on this, and you could have a bit of fun on track on it, then uh, that's the display you want, or for your scratching, your Sunday morning scratching. That's the one. So there we are, there is the new GS. Let's jump back on. The gearbox has been repositioned. I mentioned this in my first ride, but the gearbox is now repositioned on this bike and it now sits, I think, above the engine, not behind the engine. So the whole sort of transmission and engine sort of been repackaged by BMW to make it a bit more compact. And I, I, I used to hate the gearbox on the old GS. You know, you basically forget the quick shifter blipper. You have to change manually because it was, it would just be too clunky if you try and use the quick shifter blipper. So you just almost forget about it and do it manually. But with this one, it's still not 100% perfect. It's still a boxer engine. It's not like a straight four smoothness, but you can actually use the quick shifter blipper now, whereas you couldn't before. So it's a definite improvement. And when we do our 1250 comparison, we'll be able to see exactly how better it is over the older bike but it's definitely improved but i, I wouldn't say it's 100 percent perfect it all rev ranges all conditions you still get the odd clunky change but it is a vast improvement in my mind right let's give it a little bit of welly <laughs> oh it's fast <laughs> launching a GS you've now got to think about it wheeling too much it's actually cutting power because the wheels coming up wow it's, it's like launching a proper sports bike <laughs> guys fast it really goes it's really rather quick now <laughs> brilliant when it's in dynamic mode you can feel a lot more of the time and you actually got a decent sort of feedback I can feel the texture of the road quite well which i'm quite surprised about with this being telelever you know you'd imagine you'd lose a lot of that feedback from the road i'm actually feeling the texture of the tarmac and because it's in dynamic you know it's firmed everything up but it's not too firm i'm quite happy just to leave the bike in dynamic the whole time because i'm you know but if, if, if you want to if you want to then go to road mode obviously there's lots of other options there you could just feel the whole bike go <laughs> and it becomes all squishy and you still get a bit of that feel from the road but you do lose you do lose a bit of that texture so i suppose if you're going a longer distance where you don't want too much sort of feedback it's nice to have that option but even in dynamic it's perfectly acceptable to run it like that all of the time i would say stay back as i've got a bit slower the suspension's actually lowered now so i don't know what at what speed it lowers but 20 mile an hour and it's actually lowered so that's interesting so it's not that slow it's not like five miles an hour it's even lowered let's go and see when it decides to raise up 30 miles an hour it's gone neutral now it's going up 35 so it looks like it's dropped below 30. you've probably got to be at that speed for a certain amount of time until it will take the decision see 25 it's still high yeah i can feel it's high when i put my foot down 
here we go coming up to the traffic lights it's now it's gone neutral now it's going down morning shot so now it's lowered and you know the floor is just right there when I put my foot down so easy to get my feet down and even though I am a tool bugger that matters Another good little feature with having the dynamically up and down suspension is if you want to put it on the side stand, as you pull this down, it then raises the bike up to help you lift it onto the side stand, onto the centre stand. So as soon as that side that centre stand goes down, it raises the bike back up again to make it easier to pull on to the centre stand. So again, it's another reason to have that uh, fancy electronic suspension. Oh, she's looking a little bit dirty. Do you think if that had a chain? I'd have to go and clean it all now. What a beast. Let's get a coffee. While I was drinking my coffee, I've just been through some of the options here and I've now enabled the dynamic pro mode. Now, you can only have like four different modes selected, so you've got to go in and choose what you want. So I think I dropped off the rain mode, because I'm never going to use the rain mode, and I've put dynamic pro. And dynamic pro, I've been in and configured it, so the traction control, is, is the minimum amount of traction control, but that also turns off the wheelie control. So the wheelie control is disabled. So if you're a proper hooligan like me, you can have flip it in Dynamic Pro and you know you've got no wheelie control, but you've still got a little bit of traction control. So obviously it's not in ideal conditions, five degree or six degrees in wet roads, but so if, <laughs> if you want to be a bit of a hooligan on this machine, you've got that option. And I've also been through and looked at some of the other options, you know, and you can't adjust the speed at which the bike goes up and down on the height adjustable piece you know that's that's fixed you can't play with that but you can go in and you can adjust how aggressive you want your uh, cruise control to be so when you know when the car pulls out of lane it will at the moment it's set to be comfortable so it will slowly accelerate but you can set it in a more aggressive mode so it'll go back on the power quicker one thing i've noticed that without some sort of tank pad i'm getting a little bit of wear on the tank here so you could probably really use some sort of tank pad here because there's a little bit of wear appearing on the from the legs touching the tank uh, a little bit here as well look so you probably want some sort of tank protection on there because it seems even though you've got a lovely piece here your legs are still wrapping around here and potentially marking the tank oh bloody hell the more i ride this the more i bloody like it you can also when you go into that configuration adjust how the suspension you know how sporty it is so in the dynamic pro you can go this this you can go plus a bit more on the damping i ha i didn't touch it actually i left it the same as dynamic but i should have done i should have made it a bit more sporty again in the dynamic pro because you, you can you've got you can adjust things like that but you've got to go into the settings menu to properly find all that oh i'm now getting some decent heat through that seat my oh my my posterior is being treated to some real nice heat coming through now it takes a little while for a heated seat to soak through your clothes doesn't it that heat soak i've now got a perfectly warm posterior beautiful i love a warm bum is that a bit of artwork or just a fly tipper you can never tell these days i'm actually having thoughts i'm actually having thoughts about buying a GS. I mean, am I getting old? I'm just thinking about buying GSs now. I've, now I'm 52. Have I just reached that age whereby this sort of bike becomes appealing? Unfortunately, I think I have. 68 miles an hour. I'm getting. I'm getting. I'm getting no real buffeting on my helmet at all. Let's see if that works. Now I'm in just road mode. Uh, I'm not getting any blind spot detection. That's interesting. I don't know why that's not working. Mm, I've obviously got that turned off in some way, haven't I? 75, just over 4,000 revs, and there's there's no vibrations. I, you know, a t I could just feel a tiny amount of vibration, but it's such a smooth, smooth engine. You know, it's it's incredible this bike. But yeah, 75, I'm getting no real buffeting. The, the, the wind is hitting my helmet. Well, it's just above my helmet. The wind is there, just above the very top of my helmet. I'm not getting any helmet vibes. I could probably even wear a peaked helmet and it'll be fine. It's really impressive, that screen. I just feel like I could ride this bike all day long. And it's just so enjoyable 
so comfortable. You know, it's, it's really impressing me, this bike. And it's even got me thinking thoughts about buying a GS. I'm not going to. I won't do it. I just won't do it out of principle. <laughs> but this is, this is now good enough, even for a hooligan like me to want one. Quite incredible, really. And what's amazing that they've, they've injected that hooliganism to the bike, but they still made it do everything at least as well as the old one did, so even maybe better than the old one did. So you know, it's, it's a bit of an engineering marvel, this bike. It's, it's really impressive, incredibly impressive. And even this colour and the wheels and the, the tech this has got, I'm falling in love with it. The more I ride this bike, the more I just love it every time I ride it. <sighs> Bloody hell. Must be getting old. Must be getting old and boring. I've pulled up, I'm in fourth gear. Oops, I should have I should have put it into neutral. To neutral down from fourth at a standstill. Beautiful gearbox. Oh dear oh dear, raving about a GS. What am I turning into? What's wrong with me? <laughs> What's wrong with me?